chapter 1 and verse 6. The Bible that says, Be confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ you receive it. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. In the message tonight, I guess we would go with what God wants to do in your life. What God wants to do in your life and through your life. If you could see the whole thing at one time, that God wants for you and for you to do. This would be such an amazing thing. Number one reason is this. If He showed you the whole plan that He has for your life, He would have to show you the part that you've already done or missed. That you've already done or that you've already missed doing. And I'm scared there would be more that I had missed than I had done. But like I said, looking at the whole thing, then you would understand that there's time for redemption. There's time for maybe you to make some of that up. Uh, but, I, but, but I want you to think about I wish I could get it across the way I, the way that God showed it to me. I would like to think that we would be spiritual enough to look at our lives and see if we're doing what we want to do or what God wants us to do. So number one, I first look at what do you want to do with your life? Most everybody has hopes and dreams. Some have plans and schemes. Some have selfish desires. Some long to be a help to others. That's what they want to do with their life. Then we look at what God wants them to do with their life. And it's a much more important question than the first one was. He wants us to live a life one that has both temporal and eternal dimensions to it. That understand we're on a journey here and it's only so long. There's only a certain amount of time by the fact, the Lord already knows how many days when He will take you out of this world when, when, when that part of the plan comes to. So, to think of, to pay attention to, and to be a part of the temple. <coughs> that that God wants me to do before I leave. And thinking ahead, dreaming ahead, looking forward to the eternal as well. And understanding that the temple, that the temple that we live now, that part of life that we live out now, does have a bearing on our eternity. Does have a bearing on our eternity. The things we do for God now will follow us into eternity. Will follow us into eternity. So to think of the temple, to be aware of it, 
to be a part of it and what God's got for me to do every day? What is the answer to the question for you? What does God want me doing? What do I want to be doing? I find it awful revealing even if you take it one year at a time. If you could say I want to look at my future where will I be one year from now? You know most of us, what's going to happen? Whatever happens. Most of us don't make a plan. We just let life be poured out and then we get splashed around in it, you know. Trying to do some of it. But if we did have a plan including the temporal and eternal, how much different would our lives be if we were working for a particular goal in our lives? Take some of these young families in the church uh, got kids from zero to eight, nine, ten years old. <clears throat> how well or how much does it mean to you that you have a one year, two year, five year, ten year goal for your life? Do you have a place that you see yourself <coughs> in a year, in two years, do you see the issues? Don't want to call them problems. Let's just say, do you see the issues of your life? Some of those being brought maybe to an end within a year? Or you being more prepared uh, in a year? What is it that you're doing? How many of us would have to admit we don't have a thing plan. We just go see what kind of chaos tomorrow brings and jump on the wagon. Just jump on the wagon and ride it for what it's worth and then find bedtime sometime around 9, 30, 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Or, or we pursuing a plan, pursuing a goal, something that we know that God is orchestrating in our lives. What are we doing? What are we doing? I want to get into this a little bit. Listen to what he said one more time. Paul says this, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Number one point I want you to think about is this. God wants to begin a work in your life. Let's just, let's just forget about yesterday. Let's just forget about how you got to where you're at now. Just forget all that. Start over again. Let's start over again. Let's Treat tomorrow as if it's the first day, what is that I was saying? The first day of the rest of my life. So God wants to begin a work in your life. He which has begun. Now listen to me. I can't do anything for God. I can't do I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm not able to do it. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the ability. I don't have the time. I don't have this. I don't have that. It didn't say you was, it said he was. You've got to be a vessel. That's all. He's the one that will perform it. He's the one that will carry it through. He's the one that has to go to work in your life. God wants to work in the lives 
of his people. He wants to work in the lives of his people. If you think about this, standing around the water cooler tomorrow or performing some of the daily tasks that you do, you have to ponder this message a little deeper than what you do just in this hour, this given tonight. If you to ponder this thing, you're not here by accident. No one's here. No one's on the earth. No one's living by accident. And if you're saved, and that includes, as far as your own profession goes, most everybody in this room is saved. Why don't you ponder what God intends for your tomorrow? What God intends you to do. It. And, and, and let's do it. I can go down each row, each pew, and name each person <coughs> in this room because it's an individual undertaking. Tommy needs to get a hold of the plan that God has for his life because God said he has begun a work in your life. And he's going to complete it. He's going to carry it until we see Jesus coming. <coughs> Amazing grace ready to go to work in us. See, you can't you can't get out of it. You can't do away with it. Because if you think about what I just said, this includes the power of God's amazing grace. <coughs> you say, well, Jesus can't do it. Amazing grace can. Hallelujah. Preacher can't do it. Amazing grace can. Amazing grace can do it all in me and through me. Amazing grace wants to be a part of my life. And when amazing grace gets involved, there's nothing that God can't do for me, with me, or through me. There's nothing that God can't do. So God's not pushing you out there saying, yeah, 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 go ahead. Do you, you go ahead out there and live your life like I want. He says, hey, let me take my hand. Let's go live out this life that I've prepared for you. Let's go. Let's go. And think about this young person or any person, really. A very eye-opening statement. If you're saved, you can't leave Jesus at the house. I'm talking about Monday through Saturday. You can't leave Jesus at home. He goes with you Amen. everywhere, everywhere, because of everywhere, everywhere you go, the Lord goes with you. So now listen, are you how are you already to the point that you've made uh, an assessment of what I'm saying and you now already have a full understanding of where you're at in reference to this message? What, 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 and what, what am I, Brian, what is Brian doing? What part of God's work has he gotten done already? What part of God's work has he joined in with of God to do? And what does the future hold for Brian and Christy and the kids now? What does the future hold? And how much of that plan do you depend on happening? If God's involved. If God's involved. And he has to be. Only way you can accomplish it because it's God that has begun the work. God wants to reach down to meet you where you are and change you. Well, I, I don't need to be changed. Come on. 
Who in this room could use a little bit of a change in what God wants us to be? I'm telling you, they have to turn a couple of notches on that now for me to be where God and who God wants me to be. So who in here, listen, is ready for God to take part in it? Like I said, He wants to reach down to where you are. He wants us to reach for the stars. He wants to achieve success as He sees it. Now, the world kind of has a different view of what success is, but God wants you to be successful. So God wants to begin a work in you, and then extending that a little further, God wants to begin a good work, a good work in your life. He which has to do a good work in your life. God's work in you may not seem to be good at the beginning, but God always has good in mind. God always has good in mind. And I don't know why when I preach on this subject or when I read on this subject, uh, of course I consider me, and I should consider me first if I'm going to preach it, but then I consider different people in this room and those that I know a pretty good bit about. I wonder how this goes in their life every day in accomplishing God's plan for our lives. You see us living out our lives and Lord knows by looking at it, examining it, you would say, well, where in the world is God at? In the chaos that you call life. You know, where, where is the Lord's sign? Where is the Lord's plan? Where in my, my life, in, in the chaos that you call life, where is God at in it? So God also, too, has pressed upon me to extend the Wednesday night message for them. I'm going to extend it a little bit because I preach the other part of this 25 years ago in Mars Hill. I preached a message like this. I preached the message of I've got a view. I've got an idea. I've got an imagination that really goes wild. But I, I've got an idea of heaven. Of heaven. And as I look into heaven, as God lets me peer into heaven and see what's going on, I see it looks like almost a library of shells one after the other after the other with little, I think I used the analogy of a box that checks come in about that square, a little box. And there's shells in heaven. And as far as the eye can see, as far as I can see away from me, there's boxes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I'm allowed to look a little closer on the end of every box is somebody's name written. And heaven being full of it. And I'm in a room that the shells just bobble the mind. And then I step up and look. And my name on box after box after box after box. As far as I can see. Now we talk Wednesday about a box that you carry with you. And the things you've done for God that day, you put in that box. And at the end of the day, you look at the box and see where you're at with God. Do you have anything that you've done for God that you could put in that box? 
Is the box full and overflowing of the things you've done for God that day? Do you even know where your box is? Have you even kept up with just the box? Let alone what you're supposed to be filling it with every day. But what you're supposed to be filling it with is the things that you've done for God. Amen. And at the end of the day, then you, before you lay down to rest, you put the box down and you leave it. <coughs> and there's a possibility of Jesus coming by. Open the box and look. See what you got. See what you've done for Him every day. So now that's the box that Jesus intended for you to carry. This box on the shelf up there is filled with the specific will of God for your life and the blessing that goes with it. So not only is every box in there got your name on it, got your job on it or what God desired for you to do and then it's got a blessing but I wonder how many of us miss the blessing because we don't do the work we don't do the intended thing that God wanted us to do just think of Jesus said look this is when this down here is over and we're about to spend eternity with the Lord. He takes you to that room and says, I want you to see something. Now you remember the life that you lived after you were saved down there? You remember the day you were saved and I changed you on the inside and I became your Lord and Master and I started to walk with you every day. Do you remember that 50 or 60 or 70 years that you lived on earth down there, can you think back and maybe for a split second give us a mind that we were able to look back on the life that we had lived. And he said, look at the life that you've lived. Look at the blessings you lost that you never... Look what I had planned for your life. Look what I had intended to happen. Look how many blessings I had wanted to give to you. Look how much I wanted to be involved in your life. There was practically a blessing for every day that I lived my life after I give my heart to the Lord. After I give my heart to the Lord, there was a blessing for me every day. And most of the time, I was so hung up and focused on life down here that I missed most every blessing that God intended for me. And listen to this. Sometimes we now, I now, you now, we get to a place that says, you know, there's a long stretch in our life uh, that seems like a, a desert. <coughs> Can't find God. Can't find nothing to drink. Can't find anything to lift me up. And it's a desert out there. Long spans of it. <clears throat> and Jesus could show me love. At this dry place that you had in your walk with me, I had a plan for every day. I had water provided for every day. I had a blessing prepared for every day. But you overlooked it. You were too busy with this world down here and all that it takes to get along down here. You were too busy with this for me to ever show you that blessing and to give it to you that I fully intended for you to have. And you just think about this. Beginning with Wanda and going all the way to the last few <coughs> How many blessings were left on the table, were left in the shelf that God had intended for us to partake of, for us to have on this side as well? Think of the 
how that this would make probably just one of us, just one of us, the blessings that God had prepared in those check size boxes stacked one on the other would more than fill this building just for one of us. And the Lord must look and say, look at all these blessings that I have up here. Look at all that I want to do. Look at all that I want to be. Look at all that I want to be involved in. Look how much I wanted to help. Look how much I wanted to bless that day when they were feeling so down and the devil was beating them up. And I had an answer and I had a blessing that would have banished him from their life that day and give them glory and joy unspeakable full of glory. And they had not had to endure such a terrible desert and dry place in their life. I had intended for joy unspeakable and full of glory. And they let it pass. They let it go. They acted as if I were not a God of blessing. But He is. Not only for the big things like eternal life. Not only for that, but for everything that has to do with our life, the Lord wants to be a part of. A lot of us get in the habit of just leave it on the shelf till Sunday. And we'll meet the Lord down there at the church and then we'll do our little church thing and then we'll go back to the God forsaken life that we live Monday through Friday. God wants to begin a work, not only a work, but God wants to begin a good work in your life. You say, okay, you know what? I didn't get it before today. I, I got blessings that I missed. I, I didn't pick up and go with what God showed me to do. But that don't have to count tomorrow. That doesn't have to go into tomorrow. Amen. You can start today saying, you know what? If there's a blessing, I want it. And if there's a work that the Lord specifically wants me to do, and there is, I want to be a part of it. And you can just say, devil, listen, flesh, Listen, I'm going to get out of bed in the morning looking for a blessing. I'm going to get out of the bed in the morning expecting a blessing. Amen. I'm going to start living a blessing. I'm going to be a blessing to somebody. Amen. I want to be a help to somebody. Amen. I want to be a rock in somebody's life that they can depend on. <laughs> To love them, encourage them. Always try to help them and never try to hurt them. I want to be a part of every person in this room's life to be an encouragement to, a help to. I want to do that. And Jesus said, you know what? That's what I wanted you to be. And he goes, here we go. Let's just start with lesson number one. Let's just, we we'll just, we'll just roll the reel backwards. Can't give you blessings there. But let's start out today as if today we're number one. And there's a million out there. So let's start here. Will you tomorrow get up with the idea that I love and serve a blessed God that blesses me every day? Sometimes I agree. You have to look pretty close to find the blessing, but it's always there. It's always there. And you might have to change some scheduling around or, or rearrange some stuff to partake of the blessing that God intends for you. But that's part of God's plan. He has a blessing for you. He has a... And I want you to live that blessing.
today, tomorrow, until we see Him, it says, until we see Jesus Christ. So if God wants to start a work, He wants to start a good work, and then He wants to perform, He wants to perform a permanent work in your life. Jesus does. He wants to be involved in your life. You know, I look at and I listen to and even I ponder my own thoughts and, and, and examine that as well. But, but, but I take in a day that I live, just think of a day that I live now, uh, and, I, and I'll try to now, from this time forward, starting tomorrow, and as long as God's Spirit will give me strength enough to hold on to uh, this hour, uh, that I was challenged to look for a blessing. I want to look for a blessing tomorrow in my life. And I want to look for the specific will of God in my life. God has, you know, some people get to the point that they are, are, are not doing anything. They're really not, they're basically just rolling over a film of yesterday and just kind of get trapped in that rut of, I'm going to do the same thing today as I did yesterday. And it just rolls on. But God doesn't intend for us to live that way. I want to ask you, in your relationship with God, have you sensed a work in your life? Have you sensed God at work on you and for you and through you? Can you pinpoint, because this is what we do. I think we kind of get to where we act like God, I don't know, is like the tooth fairy or, 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 or something like that. Or like Santa Claus or the, or the Easter Bunny or maybe the Lord, something like that. There's a little excitement, uh, just a little burst of excitement for a moment. And, and then he's gone, and, and he'll be back. And and every now and then, uh, when something good happens, something that's apparently good, uh, not only to me but to everybody else around me, when when something good like that happens, then I, you know, will give a testimony or I'll testify of the blessing that that God that I know God had given me, and I may do it again in a couple of years. You know, if we have a testimonial service or God leads me in, in the future, then I might bring that little uh, encounter with God up. But I really don't have an encounter with God every day. I just drove the truck. I dumped the truck. I drove the truck back. I went home. I ate supper. Did the family thing. Went to bed. And here it is again, and the truck ready to go. And that's it. And that's literally all I got out of life today. God doesn't intend for that. God expects a party, an excitement, an overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit in you uh, that makes you cry out to God uh, in praise, uh, to praise Him for the blessing, and to be aware of the blessing always, and always looking for a blessing. And always trying to be a blessing. And always finding the work that God had intended for me. And I know the work that God has intended for me does not start with somebody else. It starts with me first. And then it gets in other people's lives. But if I am not set on fire, if I am not encouraged, if I am not lifted up, and I walk around with the muddy grubs all day long, there are not very many people that I'm going to excite Amen. about Jesus and what He is and who He is and what He's done for me. And it's kind of hard for them to get excited when the, the Christian comes in uh, and his lips are dragging the ground and you don't see any good thing, no excitement at all about what God has done or what God's going to do. You see none of that. And then you begin to wonder, you know, well, if they're like that, and if I'm like that, 
Is God like that? No, God's not like that. God's not like that. I'm telling you. I don't say uh, God's like that, you know, you have to be, you know, performing cartwheels and flipping and jumping and running and screaming and hollering and all of that all the time. I'm not saying He is, but He's more like that than He is like this. It's more the other way, you know, than He is just drop my head and feel so sorry for myself and have a beauty party all day long. So, so I want to encourage you. I'm going to close, but I want to encourage you today to remember Remember that library looking place. That's not scriptural. That's just me trying to use an analogy to make it clearer what I'm talking about. Remember, there's a lot of boxes up there with your name on them. It's got your name. It's got God's will. And it's got your blessing. It's got your blessing in it. Are you Go and leave it on the shelf. Grit your teeth all day. Stay mad about something. And then go to bed. Is that what you're going to do? Or are you going to reach up, take the box, open the thing up, and see what God's got for you? And remember, there's a blessing. There may be a chore to do. There may be a hard thing to do. Whatever it is, God begin it. God's going to finish it. And it's a good work in your life. Let God do something for you tomorrow morning. Start out brand new and say, now look, God, I'm going to use up some of those boxes and I'm not going to leave those things to sit there through eternity. I'm going to take some of them down and look and see what's in them. I'm going to look for a blessing. But not only that, I'm going to look for the reality of who God wants me to be and what God wants me to be. Let's stand. Father, as we close, God, let us be gripped by this message tonight. And Lord, I know that you want to give blessings to your children. And Lord, this room is full of your children. But God, it should be that full of blessing. And that full of determination to do the work that God has begun in us. So Lord, you, you help us. Starting tomorrow, God. Starting all over again. Forgiven. Foot back on a rock. Face set toward heaven. And a heart to do what you call us to do. And Lord, you have your way in our lives. In Christ's name. Amen.